I worry that today there are too many people in politics who think it is about them, their ambitions, their careers, and not about the people they serve. Theresa May. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is indeed a great pleasure to follow the speech of the Mother of the House. She has a longer record in this uh, chamber than I do, uh, but I wanted to pay tribute particularly to the way in which she has championed the cause of women in this place and uh, women's issues more generally throughout her time in this House. And it's been a pleasure, uh, perhaps latterly. I think in our early days we may not have perhaps worked together quite so uh, well, but uh, latterly to be uh, championing those issues together. Can I also take the opportunity while talking about women in this House, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, to say both to you and indeed to uh, my right honourable friend, the Chairman of Ways and Means, the uh, uh, member for Epping Forest, uh, what a pleasure it has been to have both of you in that chair and the great good humour, kindness, but also firmness when necessary, which you have both uh, dealt with our proceedings, and I wish you both all the very best for the future. Um, I would like to uh, give a few more thanks before I come on to some remarks uh, to be made uh, for, before the dissolution of the House. Uh, the first is a thank you to my Maidenhead constituents, who at seven general elections over 20, for 27 years have elected me as their Member of Parliament. Uh, and it is, I have always put a great store by the relationship between a Member of Parliament and their constituents. And I consider my Maidenhead constituents to be the best of British. They are hardworking, they are entrepreneurial, they're compassionate. I am struck uh, in all of my 27 years by the enormous effort my constituents put into helping others uh, and the voluntary work that they do around the constituency. So I have been delighted to represent this magnificent constituency. I'm the only I uh, will be the only Member of Parliament for this particular constituency because I was the first and the boundaries are now changing. So there we are. That's uh, my, my, uh, my place in history. Um, I would uh, also like to thank my Maidenhead Conservative Association, all the officers over time, all the activists, I think we all know, those who deliver the leaflets and knock on the doors uh, and raise the funds are an important part of our democracy and of our politics. I would also like to join the Mother of the House in thanking the House of Commons staff, uh, those who are seen, but also those many, many staff who are unseen and unheard. Uh, and I particularly would like to thank those uh, police and security staff who keep us safe. I think it was brought home to us on that sad day of the Westminster Bridge attack when PC Keith Palmer lost his life, uh, that there are those who are willing to put themselves forward in order to ensure that we can be safe and this parliament and, and this part of our democracy can continue. I'd like to thank my staff in my office. I've had a number over the years. Currently, uh, Cameron Bradbury, Ryan Loveridge, Emma Willis, but particularly Jenny Sharkey, who has been with me for 23 years and, uh, and has been through all the thicks and thins of, uh, of my, uh, my time here in Parliament. And a huge thank you to them. Uh, uh, most members of the public don't realise the enormous job that members of staff for members of parliament do yeah, yeah. and the significance of their role, and we owe them a, a great debt. And then my final thanks, before I move on to other comments, is to thank somebody who I think I should describe as my best canvasser-in-chief. <laughs> it's quite a good leaflet deliverer as well, um, who has been alongside me and supported me for every one of those 27 years in this place and for my time standing beforehand and as a councillor in the London Borough of Merton, uh, uh, who has uh, also been the person who was there when I was Prime Minister uh, in the evenings when he needed to make the beans on toast and pour the whiskey when the day hadn't gone quite as well as I'd expected it to go. And that, of course, is my husband, Philip. Yeah. It will be a great wrench to leave this place. Uh, and uh, if I, I can say that I first wanted to be a Conservative Member of Parliament from the age of about 12. Uh, and I was always a Conservative. I've never been a member of another party. I have always been a Conservative in the room. And I will continue to be a Conservative in the room. <laughs> this place, being in this place is a huge privilege, but it also brings with it significant responsibilities. And I just wanted to take a, a serious moment to comment on some of those responsibilities. 
Our responsibility, first of all, is to democracy. Democracy has raised living standards around uh, in, in countries. It has led to the betterment of people in so many parts of, uh, of the world. But sadly, democracy today, I fear, is under threat. And while it is easy to answer the question, what is the greatest threat to democracy, by saying, well, an autocratic state like Russia or China, actually, we should never forget the dangers to democracy from within. The United Nations, the most recent United Nations Human Development Report showed that for the first time ever, more than half the global population support leaders who may undermine democracy. There is polling evidence that uh, a, an increasing proportion of young people do not think democracy is the way to run a government. We in this mother of parliaments should do all that we can to show the value of democracy and the importance of democracy, because it is democracy that enables people to have their freedom, to be the best they can be, uh, to, uh, and to do what they want to do, rather than what the state is telling them they must do. So we have a real job, I think, uh, as politicians, both continuing in this House, but also as politicians who are leaving this House, to make sure we do everything we can to maintain democracy. And we saw, sadly, in 2021, on that January the 6th attack on the Capitol, that great bastion of democracy, that our democracy is actually more fragile than we have thought over the years. So I urge everybody to champion that cause. This place is also important because it enables us to be a voice for the voiceless. I was able, as a number of members of the House were earlier this week, to attend the funeral of the late Frank Field. He was a man who spent his life in this place giving voice to the voiceless, uh, ensuring that uh, truth was told to power. And we should never, we should never uh, shy from doing that. Uh, and it is important Powerful as this place is, and powerful as MPs may feel they are, that they should always recognise there are those who do not have that power, and MPs should be there for everybody and should give that voice to the voiceless. And there has been work on a number of issues across this House to do uh, just that over the years, and uh, I'm pleased to have been able to help in some of that, in some of that work. And then my final comment about responsibility is about the job of being a Member of Parliament. I think it is the best job in the world. Um, and of course, it has its frustrations, particularly has its frustrations when you're in government and people don't vote on your own side for your legislation. Three times. But there we are. That is, uh, uh, we, we get over these things, we carry on, we uh, come back. Um, but it is a really important job, and the key to it is to represent constituents. Mm. And I worry, and I, I've said this elsewhere, and I'll say it here in this chamber, I worry that today there are too many people in politics who think it is about them, mm. yeah. their ambitions, yeah. their careers, yeah. and not about the people they serve. Yeah. And being a Member of Parliament is a public service. Yes. We are there to serve our country and to serve our constituents. I've enjoyed my time. Uh, as I indicated, it's had its ups and downs, but <laughs> I've, been, I've enjoyed my time. I, I can say to all those on these benches, I spent 13 years in opposition. You do not want to do that. Yeah. Go out there and fight to make sure that a Conservative yeah. government is re-elected yeah. at the election. Um, I wish my successor in the new Maidenhead constituency all the very best. And to all those who return to this uh, chamber after the election, I, I ask only that they remember the importance of our democracy, that they can be a voice for the voiceless, and that their job here is not to advance themselves but to serve the people who elected them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.